Hey guys, this is Monday's question number one. It's kind of unprecedented times. I hope this finds you uh, healthy and hopefully enjoying some time off. Anyway, um, I wanted to start with this one. I've kind of given you a, a bit of a heads up here with the, the formula for this. These questions I, I attempted to make uh, to choose questions that would not require the TI-84 to solve. So. They might be considered a little bit on the easier side of things, but uh, they are still former AP test questions, so they're still good review. Um, anyway, let's go over this one. We've got a manager at a fast food restaurant worrying about water cups being filled with soda, and he does a <coughs> random sample of 80 customers who asked for a water cup and then found that 23 filled the cup from soft drink instead of water. So that's going to be X is 23 and N is 80. I'm going to back up just a second though and I need to talk about this Z star here. How do we get that if we've got a 95% confidence interval, which is what they're going to ask for here? Well, this is going to be my P hat. I don't know P in this case. I'm kind of cramming it up at the top, sorry. I want to make room so I'm not doing a bunch of stuff down here. And if I've got 95% between two values, how much do I have in each tail? That would be 2.5%. And if you don't remember the number that I've had up on the board for a 95% confidence interval, well, then you're going to need to look on table A and figure that out. And I would use the bottom side of the 2.5%. So I'm going to look on the table on the negative side, and I'm going to find 2.5% in the table as close as I can. 2.5, there we go. In fact, it's right on. It's negative 1.96 is the Z star value. So I'm going to write that out there. I don't want the negative there, because remember, when Z star, it makes it positive and negative. So, to find that on the positive side, what you have to do is go, okay, well, I've got 97.5% below, and if you went to 1.96, you'd find 97.5%, or 0.975 is what you get. All right, <clears throat> moving on. Construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for a proportion of all customers who, having asked for a cup of water when placing an order, filled a cup with soft drink. So I'm going to use these guys to get my p-hat value. That's 23 divided by 80. And that gives me a p-hat value of a decimal of 0.2875. Um, I've got my N, I've got my uh, Z star now, I've got everything I need except I have to do conditions. So let's start with, uh, is it a SRS? And it does say random sample, he took manager selects a random sample, so that's given. sample selected or selected random sample. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice seems to be a little funky. Independent? Probably because I'm not using it, yelling at you guys. I never yell at you. You'd know if I did. Alright, independent? Um, yeah, I think customers are independent. It's uh, reasonable to assume. Also, 10 times 80 is less than the population of all, let's see, how would we just say customers? This place isn't getting 800 customers, say, in a month. 
they're probably not going to stay in business for very long. Okay, and then is it normal? Well, central limit theorem doesn't apply here, remember, because we've got proportions. So that's going to be n, 80, times my p hat. Now, usually we use p, but if we don't have p, we have to use p hat. And is about 30% of 80 greater than or equal to 10? Yes, that's definitely true. And is 80 times 1 minus 0.2875 also greater than or equal to 10? Yes, conditions are met. So p hat, <coughs> I'm going to use now this formula here, p hat is 0.2875 plus or minus 1.96 for my 95% my confidence interval times the square root of sigma p hat, which is 0.2875 times 1 minus 0.2875 all over the sample size of 80. Now, if you're careful, I think you can do this with your phone, I would definitely recommend a scientific calculator if you have one at home. But I'm going to go ahead and just put this in as it is. 2875. I like to start with the minus. 1.96. Square root. 0.2875 times 1 minus 2875 divided by 80, and I get uh, 0.188, so about 18.8 percent. Two, copy that, change it to a plus. 0 0.387. Right, so, okay. So, we are 95% confident Soda thieves, how's that? Water cup soda thieves. Is between point one eight eight and point three eight seven. <coughs> I always like to throw in just and you guys know this about me. I always like to throw in a little bit of uh, darkness in there, but probably a better way to say that is that all customers who receive a water cup but fill it with soda is probably a better way to say that on the AP test. But honestly, I think that they would maybe get a little giggle out of that, so I think we're good there. So there's my conclusion. Now, going on to B, it says the manager estimates that each customer who ask for a water cup but fills with a soft drink costs the restaurant 25 cents. Suppose the month of June, in the month of June, 3,000 customers ask for a water cup when placing an order. By the way, you could use that up here. Uh, where did I go with that? Here we go. Um, right here for the all customers. Yeah, 3,000. Anyway. <clears throat> they uh, they ask for for the water cup. So what would the what would the loss to the company be and the loss to the restaurant be if our proportions are correct? So what we're going to say as see is I'm going to take one point one eight eight 
times 3,000 to find out how many we expect on the low end to actually get the, the cup and use it for soda. So 0.188 times 3,000. <coughs> so that would be 564 people who get the cup for water but fill it with soda. And then if I multiply that times 0.25, a quarter each, that's going to be $141. If I do the same thing with the 0.387 portion of the 3,000 that we expect <coughs> to swindle us out of soda, that's 1,161 people. I'll multiply that times 0.25. Based on our interval, we would expect the restaurant to lose somewhere between $141 and $290.25. So, anyway, guys, take care of yourself, be safe, and uh, enjoy your week. I will uh, see you soon.